Hello YouTube, uh, Devin here again, and I have another helmet video for you, and it's on probably one of the best steel helmets uh, to come out of the 20th century, and um, like most other great stuff to come out of the 25th century, uh, not 25th, the 20th century, it's Swiss, so if you couldn't already tell by the camouflage, because I know a lot of you guys really like camouflage, so... Uh, this is Alpenflage, which is pretty much a Swiss copy of um, a camouflage the Nazis developed in late 1945. And you think, well, wow, that probably wouldn't hide you at all. But this camouflage, actually the reason it has lots of red and stuff in it, is so that um, it could defeat early night vision or infrared. So the red would really help break everything up if you were looking at it under night vision. So that's why the Swiss continued to use this until actually just 1990 they got rid of uh, the Alpenflage for, for the new, uh, which is pretty much still just this pattern, but they took all the red out. So, but yeah, this is, a, this is actually a very, very effective camouflage pattern as far as uh, you would go in Switzerland high up in the mountains and stuff like that. Um, it actually worked it actually worked quite well so um but uh this cover uh like every other piece of swiss equipment uh is made out of a 50 50 polyester cotton blend um it has foliage loops on it um the helmet is held in place with a drawstring in the back and uh little hooks that hook around the edge of the shell because uh the swiss over engineer everything not not so bad but um it's I mean, they probably could have done stuff a little bit cheaper and uh, better, but uh, I really like the quality the Swiss put into all of their stuff. As you can see, this is a superbly made helmet cover. There's nothing to go wrong on it. It's got metal hooks for durability. It's uh, The fabric it's made out of is actually a very, very nice fabric that they continue to use today, even. So, we'll get that out of the way and take a look at the shell here. Now, this is the Swiss M71 helmet, and it is a... A very very good helmet now it's got a very very odd texture in it uh, because it's not smooth but it's not like actually textured either it's got like these little globs of paint on it and that's because they added sawdust to the paint so instead of like having like using walnut pieces or cork like the US helmets do this is just kind of like paint buildup. So it's got a different texture to it than than most other helmets. So, and uh, this one is unused. As you can see, it was repaired and probably just hung on a shelf. So you can see where the paint is scratched off and they repainted over it. So there's some, some marks there. And the Swiss take very good care in these very, very good materials when they make anything. So there is not a speck of rust on this helmet. Uh, this is actually a very, very early helmet uh, that was updated uh, to the second version of this helmet. Now, there are two versions, and one is just an updated. The second version is just an updated version of this shell, and we'll we'll get into that here after we give you a, a look around the helmet. So, this will be the front. This will be the left side. This will be the rear. And this will be the right side. So... Um, this is a very very awesome helmet. I really like it. It's comfortable and these are cheap. You could find them pretty much everywhere. So now we'll we'll take a look at the the liner now. Um, see, as you can tell, this liner is it's hard to find one with a liner this nice. But uh, even if you get a liner that's pretty beat up, it's usually still in very very good condition. Um, <clears throat> I could tell this one was never issued because the Swiss do this thing. Um, Oh, well, it was never issued after it was refurbished anyways because the Swiss do this thing where they hang these little, little like, three-quarter inch plastic discs that tie around the drawstring at the top that you would write your name on. Um, and this didn't come with one of those. So, uh, it does have a sticker in it, though. Um, and it looks like the sticker had a, had a name on it at some point. So, but I don't know what it says because it looks like somebody tried to peel it off. So, and uh, this one has the chin cup, which they didn't start doing until the, uh, like, 90s. They started putting chin cups on their helmets to make them more comfortable. Because the Swiss didn't actually, I don't even know if this helmet is fully replaced as of 2017. 
because I know last time I checked, which was like 20, late 2015, early 2016, these were still in service uh, with the Swiss military. So, give you perspective, this helmet served from 1971 to probably 2016. So, but now it's being replaced by a, a Swiss version of the shoe birth helmet, which you can see my video on the shoe birth if you want to look at that. And the only difference between the shoe birth video I have up and the Swiss one is it has little lugs on it for hanging a mask, uh, like a brow plate, kind of like a German 1916. Um, and it has a quick change helmet chin strap. It has like a quick release chin strap. So that's it. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing with a different color. Uh, it's kind of a brown, dark brown color, mud brown on the outside. So, <clears throat> but, um, so this is kind of like most, uh, Swiss stuff. It's got four leather pads, leather backed, and they're stuffed with cotton batting. Uh, so you could take the cotton out and stuff, uh, if you really needed to fit, uh, fit them better. So, uh, the pads are very nice. It adjusts with the drawstring at the top. Uh, they do come in a bunch of different sizes and you'll have to, uh, know what your size is. Okay. And if you want to know, once you figure out your size, to be able to tell the size that's on the helmet, it's right there on the aluminum liner. All right, so this is a 57-58. I wear a size 58 in metric. So you can see it right there on the aluminum liner, the 57-58. All Swiss M71s will have that, and it's all in the same exact spot. All right. So a lot of the ones that you find in this nice condition are either the really, really super large ones that are like 61 to 63, or the really, really small ones that nobody could wear. And the reason they're in this nice of condition is because they were never used. So, but to find one in kind of the medium to large sizes like this, that's in this nice condition is actually fairly, fairly hard to do. Um, so the aluminum uh, liner is held in place with four rivets around the shell. All right, mm -hmm. there they are. They look like that at all four points. And those are the rivets that also hold in the chin strap points. As you can see right here, here's that swivel D-ring. So this is the liner and the one behind it is to hold in the D-bail for the chin strap. It's all held in place with the same rivet. All right. Um, and then that is protected by a foam impact liner, which is in between the aluminum and the steel shell, which gives the helmet um, more bump protection as well as uh, concussion protection. So... Uh, it's a very well thought out helmet. The Swiss don't make any garbage. So um, it's not the most comfortable helmet liner, and it does take a long time to break in because these have some very, very thick leather pads. Um, the chin strap is adjustable through um, uh, your typical stud and keyhole. You would uh, adjust it, uh, put it through different studs and line them up to, to fit it. And then the chin strap is adjusted by a slider buckle. Um, and it's held in place with just a hook hook over a d-ring so um the chin cup makes it a lot better uh the chin crap cup does not have anything in it uh as far as padding goes but it does make this helmet a lot more comfortable than having to route this leather strap uh down uh where your neck bends uh or right on the uh, edge of your chin because uh, this is a pretty narrow chin strap so and it's thick leather so it and the uh the adjustment isn't all that great so you have you have the issue where uh, you run into some adjustability issues, and the chin cup really really helps uh, with taking one of the factors out of that adjustment process. So um, we'll get into the difference between the early ones and the late ones, which are this, and it's a pretty simple thing. They added this D ring in the back for storage, so now you can hang it um, or route it through a uh, piece of webbing on your backpack. Uh, this does move. This one's pretty stiff, so I normally just leave it in the up position like that. But they just added this little rivet so you could hang it in like an armory, storage lanyard, uh, for quick ease of access or to, to hang off your equipment when you don't want to wear it. Because it's still a helmet and it's still heavy. So, but, um, so now we'll compare it to the helmet it replaced. The Swiss have really, really only had three helmets in their entire military career. And uh, I did a video on this one already. This is the M1917 uh, Swiss helmet. So, and this is the M71 that replaced it in 1971. So, 1917 to 1971, 1971 to 2016, where it was replaced with the shoe berth. So, as you can see, the size differences and stuff like that, uh, they kind of cut down the bill. The helmet's pretty much just as wide. Uh, they took the skirt off this one. Um, 
But all in all, both these are very good helmets, and I recommend you pick up both of them, actually, if you can, while they're still very cheap, because, I mean, you, it's Swiss. You can't go wrong with Swiss stuff. They make some nice, nice, nice stuff. Uh, these helmets are going to be very, very effective for you. So, uh, if you want, Mike B. has done a shot test against one of these, I believe, on his channel. So um, I've referenced his channel in a lot of videos, and there's links in a couple of my videos to his channel if you want to go see his stuff. So I highly recommend his channel to you too, uh, to you guys as well. Um, so, uh, so I'll probably uh, leave this video here, and uh, hopefully you guys liked it and you found this very informative. And hopefully you guys pick one of these up because they're they're a very very nice helmet. So uh, all around. So, but um. So, please like this video and subscribe, uh, tell your friends, spread the word about the channel. I would love a shout out. If you have a channel, I would love to come watch your stuff as well. Uh, just drop me a comment. Um, if you have any helmets that you have trouble identifying or anything like that, or if you want to just, I would love to just see your helmet collection if you have any, please drop me a comment and we'll get together or whatever on something where you can send me some pictures. Um, I would very much like to see that, so... Uh, till then, I will leave you guys here, and I'll see you in the next video, hopefully. Bye.